there's some some books that I read that are so I'm not really a reading theory kind of person. That's why I don't teach theory. I, I've heard enough theories in school. Um, I read books that talk about other people's businesses. Um, so bi autobiographies or just business lessons from entrepreneurs. So for instance, a book like Shoe Dog, Phil Knight, is Nike's story, or <coughs> The Rise of Jack Ma, the story of Ali Baba, or Sneaker Wars, that's the story of Puma and Adidas. Like, they were amazing brothers. I still feel very sad for them, but it's fine. Um, so those, those are the kind of books you catch me reading. Africa's Greatest Entrepreneurs. I can't remember the author's name. She's female. Um, so those kind of books. I want to see people who have achieved something, how they did it, how they failed, and what business lessons I can take out of that um, to help me in my business and to help me teach. Um, yeah. Money is a, I always say money is water, it flows. Um, so it's what you do with it in your hands that matter. And I'm of the opinion that I have the ability to create wealth. Um, so before I used to live in fear, like, oh my God. And I, so <laughs> very horrible <laughs> mentality. My accounts, I, then I cannot have less than 300,000 in my account. Because once it goes below that, I'm already panicking, like, oh my God, I'm going to be broke. <laughs> um, but I, I worked with a, a life coach, Mfon, she's amazing. And she helped me understand uh, money. So after a while, many a times, I th I'm not sure I'll have more than 40,000 in my account, just in case something happens, but I'm fine. So I've learned that money will come and go. Like, even if I leave that 300K in my account, I'll see, sweet, I'll buy. I'll see. So in two weeks, you'll notice that the money has reduced, but you cannot place your hand on what to use it for. Use it to do a couple of stuff that were not necessary, but because the money was sitting there. Currently, I'm only investing in agriculture. Yeah, so I have, I have cassava farms, I have sweet potato farms, I have maize farms, I have poultry farms. Um, with different companies, so there's like, five different agro companies that um, I'm investing in, because I, I lost all my money for, in stocks. Not all share, but like 50% of it went, it's very painful. Um, so I sat with an investment um, advisor, Tommy Balugo, and she gave me options, and I stuck to agri. So I've done agri all this year, and it's been amazing. Oh, I'm currently in love. Yes, uh, you you find I don't invite you. He is absolutely amazing. Like, um, unlike before, where I've never really been challenged um, in past relationships, but with him, he challenges my thought process. One, two, he helped me um, get through some limiting beliefs and patterns that I didn't know existed so i was manifesting in certain ways because of how i've been treated um in the past you know so i'm learning to be open me i don't i'm not open i'm not an open person um so i keep very few friends and i think except one person nobody can actually tell you about trisha you think you know me yeah. but you don't because i'm always in your face but you don't um so i'm learning he's helped me understand that it's okay to be vulnerable um and it's okay to be upfront with people and with the person. So I, I've, as in I've learned so much. I struggled with it at first, cause I'm like, oh, that's giving you a status report, like where I was today, what I did, like what was, please I beg, like. <laughs> um, but it's helping me be more human. <laughs> um, and yeah, he, he supports my businesses, like any crazy idea I have. Um, he just, okay, he, how can I add value? Um, to it, etc. So yeah, I met him through my coach Steve Harris. <laughs> um, how do you we met in twenty seventeen? So um, then, one of the things that I used to build myself was I was Steve's assistant. So any training he had, I would just go there and serve tea and carry paper. I wanted to learn. 
you wow. know. So I was so that training was in was in Uyo. I paid for my flight. I went there. It was the first bank training he had, um, and I wanted to sit in a corporate training and understand how it works. So I was not the only assistant. There was three of us. So he was one of the assistants, and that was how we met. Um, yeah, so we, we became friends um, from there, but just like random friends. But in 2018, we now began to, to date, so yeah. No, I've had a couple of relationships. I've been married before and I was divorced. So I've been there, done that, um, yeah. Uh, and you know, I never talk about my failed marriage. Oh, I was married for two years and it was a disaster. It was like a million things that I try not to talk about. I got married when I was 20. How old was I? I was 26. Okay, yeah. Yes. yes. No, 27. Okay. So I wasn't too young, um, but it was one of those things where I had blind faith and I did not. Um, I wasn't looking at all the things that I should. So I married somebody I did not know. And every day in the marriage, I began to realize what exactly I'd gotten myself into. And it got to the point where I couldn't anymore. And my dad was like, get out while you still can. Uh, so I left. It wasn't physically abusive. But then physical, if it was physical abuse, that's, yeah, that's, no, physical abuse is the least of abuse. That's Except you break my head, if you beat me, the pain will go. I was doing um, Christian sister stuff, where they say they don't spend the nights, don't this. So he had a night life I did not know about. Because I was doing good girl, I just go there during the day, I try not to spend nights. Um, and so there was a lot of pretense. So when we're married now, you have to spend the night with me, I mean, hey. And then I began to realize, oh, okay. 2017. Okay, so there were infidelity stuff. Um, and on the day of our anniversary, um, as, as usually, I can't remember. If you remember, I'll be surprised. So at the evening of the anniversary, I'm like, oh, happy anniversary, by the way. And he's like, oh, he forgot. He wasn't feeling fine. Amnesia, please. Anyway, so I, I'm like, let's have a conversation. You know, so I sat down with him, you know, like, what is really the issue? Like, maybe something, maybe I'm a terrible person. Like, so just tell me so I can, you know, go and work on myself, get better. Like, I just want to understand why that despite all I try to do to support and be helpful, but you just be unfortunate. I'm like, oh, there's nothing actually the issue. <coughs> I'm like, okay, so why are you going to different women? And you know, the I think what hurt me the most was the fact that he kept denying, but I think I was used to that by then, even though I had proof. Um, you didn't show him the proof? Oh, I told him the proof. I didn't show him. But once if I say the proof, um, he he knows that I know. And his typical strategy is when he's accused, he gets upset and then starts to keep malice. So I traveled to Abuja for something, I can't remember. And no, did you land? Did you die? Did your airplane crash? Nothing. I spent three days in Abuja. I came back, same thing. Um, and one morning I woke up and my spirit said, you're done. I packed my load into my car. I dropped the ring and in notes and that was the end. Yeah. And it took him four months to come and apologize. I had more, uh, I was done. You know, maybe if he had come, maybe like next week or something. You know, so my, my father was shocked, like, he hasn't called you. I'm like, no, no he can't call me. If he calls me, he'll be acting out of character. Because um, I couldn't explain to them, like, what I had. So the only thing my dad told me was that he had watched me be unhappy for two years. And I should know that my, happi my happiness is tied to other people's happiness so but but he cannot come into my home because i did not invite them in so they were waiting for me to say something um so when i said i was done he was like he'll support me that whatever i needed to to do to be to be happy um yeah and and that was it 
And he didn't even come to apologize to say, we'll come back home. He came, he's apparently, everything had stopped working in his life. Because of course, I got him the last job and my friend fired him because my friend was his boss. So he came, his pastor told him that everything wasn't working in his life because he had offended me and he needed my forgiveness to prosper. That was what he came for. And like me, I'm not good. Like, your Waterloo is waiting in the front. <laughs> Oh my lord, so yeah, um, been there, been there, done that. I blame myself for a bit right. um, because I should have understood the person, so that's not his fault, that's my fault. I wasn't mature enough to know what I was supposed to look out for, and I didn't have a figure in my life that would sit me down and tell me, okay, these are the things you're meant to check and everything. My mom was just very happy that I thought I was getting married, so... <laughs> Isn't that what they always want? Um, so yes, so I blame myself that I didn't check well to see, um, and even when I saw warning signs, I was like, he'll change. Mistake ever, they, ne they don't change, except Holy Spirit comes down and enters inside. Um, so I was like, he'll change. And even when my friends pointed out some things to me, I called all of them haters, like, you don't want us to marry my friend, we lost. Um, I should have sat down to see reasons. Uh, but I was just really excited and I was in love. I just never thought that it would get ugly. Um, so yeah, so now I'm, I'm wiser. I don't believe in all those male and bones things again. One, I took out the fact that um, you can't change people and you need to be clear on the values that you are willing to accept or not. I wasn't clear about all those things. Um, I went in saying, oh, he'll stop his drinking habits or he'll stop his smoking habits. Like, I was like, he'll stop, 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 stop for you. Why? You know, so um, that's the first thing. Know what values you can live with and um, no, nobody's going to change for you except God changes them. So that was one thing. Um, the second thing that I learned out of, of that relationship um, was the fact that I should st stop playing God. So, <laughs> like, one of my mentors now, she's like, I wish I could slap you over the head. Um, so, I, my own, I'm the, I'm the kind of person that I like to help. I don't have to ask for help, but I like to help. So, there was plenty dark days. Um, finance wise in the in the marriage and one of the only things I've ever gotten right in my life was career so I've I've always gotten a great job I've always had my finance in check even though every other thing was absolutely disaster um, so if he couldn't afford to pay rent Trisha was always there if he couldn't afford to pay his son's fees Trisha was there like anything Phil, um, business his, he lost his job. No, he resigned from his job. He said his boss spoke to him anyhow. I got the next job, left that one. I got the next job, left that one. I started a business. Like, I did not want him to, to suffer because I had money. It's like I was rich, but I had money and I just wanted to help. But apparently, I was maybe like making him feel less of a man. I was playing God and not allowing him go out and fend. Um, so then the load was all on me. Um, and then I got to a point I began to resent him. Um, so I learned that, hey, no, I'm playing God. Everybody's guy, you go and you go and make it work, you go and hustle it out. Um, uh, so I've learned that I don't know if I was still not support. Because <laughs> I'm used to supporting. Um, but maybe not to the extent um, that I took it then. So that's the second thing I learned. Um, then I also learned that you need to know the person. Now you'll never know anybody finish. Like, <laughs> they're like professional um, 
hiders and whatnot, um, but just make an effort uh, to understand who this person is and if you can live with, with who the person is and who the person can become. What are the top trips? Uh, tricks. One is consistency. So except I'm dying, I'm, I show up every day on Instagram. There is a post, video, live class, etc. So consistency. And if I, if I relate that to a physical store, let's say for instance, you, what, what meal do you like? Amala, fantastic. So you go to Yashita and today you eat this amazing Amala. Then you come tomorrow, it's closed. You make an excuse and be like, okay, maybe today's environmental or they lost someone. When you come three times, four times, is you look for another Amala. Um, so it's the same thing with Instagram, right? Um, even though you don't feel the content is right, put it out there uh, because consistency pays. So that's one. Two is understanding who your target audience is on Instagram and where they converge. So you need to be visible on places where they converge. So if you know that, okay, your audience are on Trisha's page or they're on Isaac's page or they're on this person's page, how visible are you there? Are you adding valuable content as reply to their captions, etc., so that for some way we might see you? Third is use of hashtags. Hashtags, there are so many lectures and videos and, and articles on hashtags, but hashtags are a way to be found when we're searching. So people use the wrong hashtag, using all those IG for good. I'm like, what are you doing? So just think about it. If somebody was going to look for this dress, what will I type? What keyword will I type? It's simple. It's like hashtags are very simple. It's not as complex as make it seem, you know, so hashtags. Then your bio, how optimized is it? That's like an amazing tool. So first things on the bio is the first line on your bio where everybody writes their business name. They are wasting it. That's a search engine optimization line where you're meant to be typing a key, you're meant to have a keyword that we'll be looking for. So for instance, if I was a healthy food business, it shouldn't be Trisha Food Company there. It should be healthy food in Lagos because when we search, the search will favor that line. You know, and then are you making use of your highlights? Highlights is like your website. So do you have like an about us, a menu page, a like learn how the platform works. There are people who teach Instagram for a living. Yeah. I learn from them as well. In Nigeria, there's Ninja Brand Chick. In the US, there's Sissy, the six figure chick. Um, and then there's a few others scattered around. I pick things here and there from them. Check Instagram updates. They release updates every now and then. See what new features have been added. But the most important thing or the final point is that the more features you use on Instagram, the more they like you. <laughs> so if, you, if they have Instagram Live, use it. They gave you Instagram Stories, use it. Instagram Feed, use it. Instagram Highlights, use it. Anything they bring out, use it. I don't know if, if I don't know how it works back end, but it feels like the more you engage and use their, all their tools on their platforms, the higher your ranking um, on the Explore page or etc. So just use it and stop all this, oh, I'm not camera friendly, my face is not this, my voice is not that. It doesn't matter, just use it. So just use it. And stop all this, oh, I'm not camera friendly, my face is not this, my voice is not that. It doesn't matter, just use it. You get to be like maybe 40K or something. Um, for me, I knew I just wanted to learn because I didn't even know what I was going to do with my, my life. Um, so I just told him that, can you be giving me seven five every month? in addition to my salary, because transport to and fro the office every month was 10K. And then I needed to feed, so I'm like, 4K. Okay. I'll be fine. Um, so I, I got the job, I went for the interview. It was like, the, it's been my hardest interview ever, because he interviewed me with his wife. They kept asking me like a zillion questions. I'd never done an interview before and all that. My interview to work in broadcasting was to do a recording. So it wasn't like, tell me about yourself, What's your five-year plan? What's five-year plan? Like, I don't even know my now plan. They asked me for a five-year plan. Um, but I got in, and in three months, I think, no, like four months, I was confirmed, and I was offered full-time, I think. They now made it 20-something K. 
Um, but because I applied myself, I became project lead with my 20 something K. Mm -hmm. um, and then I just kept looking for opportunities. I applied for the next role. Um, <coughs> my broadcasting experience helped me. They wanted somebody who understood media. I got in, so I moved from Yaba to Ikoi. They added 25K, so it was 50K. Um, so I just kept moving. Then the next one was in Lekki. So I kept going further from home. <laughs> And the lucky role, I applied as a graduate trainee. Um, so when I went for the interview, well, there was like a hundred of us. I went for the interview. It was a PR consulting firm. And chairman said that you're too qualified to be the graduate in, yeah, yeah, okay, overqualified. Um, so we won't be taking you. I felt crushed. Um, so I went back. But apparently, the HR kept my CV. So another four months time, a role opened as a senior executive, and she called me. I went for the interview on a Saturday. I got the job, and it was 100K. And it just kept going. It just kept going all the way. I was a senior executive there, and then from there I moved to brand manager. I moved to senior brand manager. I moved to account director. Like I, I kept moving all the way. So by the time I, um, I stopped working, I was... Category Marketing Manager at GSK.